Hi folks and welcome to today's video in which we are going to be looking at smartphones and as you can see from the thumbnail this is the smartphone buyer's guide. So the purpose of this video is to help you understand um, exactly what you need to know when you want to purchase a smartphone. This could be you upgrading your smartphone, it could be you getting a new smartphone, um, looking at buying a smartphone you know as a gift but uh, by the end of this video you'll know exactly what to ask when going to purchase a smartphone. So let's jump in. So the very first question you need to be asking is, well, when, when we look at the smartphone, what are you gonna be doing with it? What is the purpose of the smartphone? So whether it's for yourself, whether it's for somebody else, try and find out or figure out what they are mostly gonna be using the smartphone for. Is it gonna be for photos? Is it gonna be for video? Is it going to be for schoolwork? Is it going to be for, you know, just to communicate with others? What is the purpose of this device? Because I can tell you now, once you have that answer, it's going to help you answer every other question very easily. The second question you need to ask is, well, size. How big does the phone actually need to be? Do you need a big phone? Does the person you're buying it for need a big phone? If so, why? Do you see that it's going back to the purpose again? Okay, so this is why knowing the purpose of the phone is very important. Then we look at size and then very importantly, we look at space. How much hard drive space is actually in this device? Now, most smartphones do come out with around 16 gigs of space or 16 gigs of hard drive space. But again, depending on what you're going to be doing with it, like for example, if you're going to be shooting a lot of video and pictures, 16 gigs might simply not be enough. I mean, this one that I bought, which is a Samsung Note 20, um, I use it a lot for videos, pictures. Um, I do a lot of uploading, obviously, onto, onto YouTube. So for me, um, I needed a phone that has a lot of space. In this case, it was like over, I think this one's got about 256 gigs of space. And before I forget, with space, you need to also ask um, the folks if you can upgrade the amount of space that you have on the device. So with the Samsung uh, Note, for example, it doesn't have um, another slot where I can pop in a memory card. Okay, Some smartphones do have that. So if your particular smartphone, the one you are looking at, um, has that, it means that you can add extra space to it. Okay, So that's primarily what it is there for. If it doesn't have that, then just understand you can't upgrade the space. And this is why in cases like that, you take a phone with more space. Then two of the biggest things that, that impact the performance of a smartphone is your RAM or your memory and your CPU. Now the CPU, I don't want to get too technical on it. The CPU deals with all the instructions and everything that really happens at the core of your device. So the fact that your device you know, opens very quickly, the fact that your device can handle multiple applications um, and the general running of the uh, smartphone is done by that CPU. So the better the CPU, the more powerful the CPU, the better it's gonna perform. Added to that, all those instructions for opening those programs are stored into memory. And all you need to know is the more memory you have, the better your smartphone is going to perform. A lot of smartphones have an entry level um, amount of RAM of around about two to four gigs. Again, go back to the purpose. What are you going to be doing with this device? And that will tell you and guide you as to how much RAM you should actually have. Then the screen size, like I mentioned earlier, and quality of the screen. So um, they'll usually tell you something like it is a 16 million color um, display. It's a, it's a QLED display or, your, or OLED display. With that, it's just telling you or referring to how clear the picture is that's going to be on you. Is it going to be, you know, brilliantly colorful? Um, is it going to be one that, uh, it's not that clear, but it, it, it does everything it needs to. So that is also important. Does it display 16 million colors? And what that means is that each and every little pixel that makes up the picture can change into 16 million different colors. The higher that number is, the better the quality of the picture on the screen. So your, what your icons look like, your wallpapers, all of those things. Then at the bottom over here, you don't see a headphone jack. There's my charging port, there's my little pen, there's my output for my speaker, but you don't see a headphone jack. So 
Just understand a lot of these smartphones do not have headphone jacks. They assume you're going to be um, using Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth earphones, you know, or those um, ear pods. So this is why many of them don't come with that anymore. They've moved to more wireless. So just understand that in case you want one that actually has that. In my case, I would now actually need an adapter to go in here that will give me that port. And then I can plug my normal headphones in there. Um, but again, you would need that as an extra. Then the two last items. The first one is your battery life. How long is the phone going to last if it's fully charged and I'm using it? Okay, those are things you need to ask. Not fully charged and sitting on the counter doing nothing. No, actually using it. There's a big difference in the battery life. You can also find out if the device has wireless charging capability. And then lastly, our old friend over here and at the back, our old friend, the camera. So this is a defining feature for a lot of people. In fact, um, a lot of teenagers look at the camera first before they look at anything else. So it's important to understand that your smartphones come with two cameras, one in the front and one at the back. So the front camera is for obviously selfies. Um, it can take video as well. So it's important to ask how many megapixels does the front camera have? What type of video quality does that front camera give? So if the front camera can give like, you know, HD quality video and it's giving, let's say over 10 to 15 uh, megapixels uh, in terms of uh, camera quality, then you're fine. In the case of this phone, very high quality camera in front and up to 4K on the back camera. So that's just the front camera. On the back camera, that's your main camera. Understand that this is your main camera. So the specs on the, on the rear camera will always be higher than the front camera. Okay, again, megapixels you want to have a look at. You want to ask, um, you know, sensor size because that relates to how much light it takes in. The more light it can take in, the better the quality of the image. Um, and then also on the video side of things, up to what sort of quality can it record? And again, like this one, it can record up to 4K uh, video. So folks, I hope that helps you um, with all the questions you need to ask and think about when you go and purchase a smartphone. And you can see this is like purchasing a computer because it has everything that the computer has in it. Stay tuned because the next two videos will deal with um, the same buyer's guide, but when it comes to laptops and the other one when it comes to desktop computers.